Hello and welcome back to PSD Touch Plus. I'm Martin Perhiniak and this is the second part of the Ready, Set, Actions mini-series. Today I'm going to show you how to record a bit more complicated action in which I'm going to show you how to turn a two-dimensional design into a three-dimensional visual. I'm going to follow the same steps that I showed you in the previous part so I'm going to go to the actions panel and under the PSD Touch Plus folder I'm going to create a new action I click on the new icon here and I'm, I will call this 3D visual or print visual I'm going to also set a keyboard shortcut in this case I'm going to use command shift F4 and as, I, as soon as I click on OK the action is already being recorded so I need to be careful what I'm doing from this point on and because I have several layers in this document first of all I want to make sure that whenever I use this action it will work exactly the same way so depending on how many layers you have you might have problems uh, using actions so you have to be consistent and that's what I would like to do uh, or, or make sure that it works I just click on the layers panel uh, menu and I choose flatten image that will turn everything into a background layer now that's much easier because now as soon as this is saved into the action next time I use it it will automatically start again with flattening the image which is which is good so now I can double click on the background layer and I can call this print so that my that's my print layer then I create a background layer I command click on the new icon here in the layers panel which will create a new layer just below the one on top and I'm going to call this background I would like to fill this in with white colors so for just to make sure once again that uh, next time when I use this action it will be the same color I press D which is default swatches and as you can see here in the actions panel it's recorded as reset swatches now, as soon as I have that recorded I can use another keyboard shortcut command or control backspace to fill in the background layer with white that command backspace, backspace or control backspace always uses the background color to fill the actual selected layer or selection now I have everything set up I just need to make sure my print layer is turned into a smart object so I'm going to right click on it and choose convert to smart object this is also saved in my action that is useful because I'm going to do some kind of distortion on this image and when I want to make some changes to it later on it's always better to keep it as a smart object because that's the non-destructive way to transform your images now I'm going to use the free transform tool so I go to edit free transform and I'm going to make this smaller alt or option shift together holding down those keyboard shortcuts and dragging up the corner point of an image you can change the size uh, and keep keep it centralized change and also uh, keep it in proportions that's quite useful to know let me just close my actions panel for now and continue working here in the on the image so I'm going to turn this in perspective so first of all for that I'm going to rotate it around a bit and then holding then command or control on PC I'm going to distort this image into perspective as you can see by holding only one point down after rotating it I can already almost get a perspective feel and then I'm also going to do this here on the right side and I can add a bit more perspective to it if I want just emphasizing the perspective and then I'm going to press enter all I need now is the layer effects so I'm going to double click on the print layer add drop shadow and once drop shadow is selected I can use the cursor to move the shadow around that's a fast way instead of using the angle and distance then I change the size and I change the spread a bit let me move it around again and change the opacity to get something like that as my drop shadow that's fine I click on OK and then I go to the background layer I double click on that and I add the gradient overlay reverse that uh, overlay with this reverse option here and change the opacity reduce it down and then we have a nice uh, gradient on the background so that's before and that's after 
and then I click on OK. And that's all I wanted to uh, create with this action. So I'm going back to the actions panel now and I click on stop. So once the action is stopped, I can start using this action on other images. So let me just go to another image. This is the one that we used in the previous tutorial. And let's just try to test it. So this will be the guinea pig. And this is the most exciting part always when you record a long action and you want to see it in action, then it's always exciting for the first time. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it will work. If it doesn't work, then you have to find the problem and amend it. You can always make changes to your actions. So let's just see, let's start it. And as you can see, we have exactly the same result. Without doing anything, just simply running the action, it works just fine. So let me just go back in the history panel to uh, the first step and start it all over again. So I'm going to play the action and without any waiting around, we have the final result. What you need to make sure is to use the same image size and also the resolution. I want to show you what if you have a different resolution to the image that you recorded the action. So for example, let me just go back to this image, the beginning, and I show you that in the previous example, our resolution was set to 240. Now this is not really a clever idea because most of the time your resolution will be 72, uh, set to 72. Um, but it can be different anytime and also the size can be different and then your transformation can be a problem because the transformation is also depending on the size and resolution. So let me just show you. So as you can see this image originally is 240 resolution and that's what I saved into the action. But what if this image here is set to 72 instead? Okay, so let's just run the action now. Without changing the resolution, this is what we get. So by just a small difference between the two images, even though their size is the same, if the resolution is different, you will get a different effect uh, distortion um, running the same action. So how to make sure that this won't happen next time. So let me just go back to the original file here, okay, which is 72 ppi. And let me go to back to this one here and also go back to the original file. Okay, so before I, I ran the action on it. What I'm going to do is to record an extra step as the beginning of the action. So we are going to add a step. For that, I'm going to click on record and I go to the image menu and choose image size and change resolution to 72. Make sure that you don't have the resample image on. This option is turned off. I'm going to click on OK. And this won't change my image, it just changes the resolution. But that is very important for any feature like uh, transforming the image. I'm going to turn off recording now and move this image size option on the top. So that's what I would like to have as my the first step of my action. Now if I run this action, we will get the same distortion problem that we had on the previous image. So how to resolve this? First of all, I'm going to go back in history to the original state of the image and I'm going to re-record the transform action. So first of all, I need to get to that point. So I'm going to double click on this first option flatten image then double click on image size while holding down command or control again set background make layer set current layer reset swatches fill select layer print convert it to smart object and then here we are at the transform option now this is what i would like to re-record so i'm going to click on record option and i'm going to use the free transform tool and I'm just going to repeat what I did. So let me just close the panel and I turn it around and I'm going to turn it into perspective or add the perspective on the image. Something like that. Let's make it a bit bigger and press enter. Now I go back to my actions panel and turn off the recording. And you can see that this is the action that we need. The previous one we don't need. So let me just delete that one. Okay, and we will keep this one. I go back in history to the first state 
and let's test our action again so I run it and it works fine on this one let's check it on the other image as well so I select that one and let's just check the resolution here is already 72 but in our action we have an option to change that resolution to 72 this shouldn't be a problem so let's just test it I'm going to run it and it works just fine I know it's a bit complicated switching back between the history states and also changing the action and working on two different images but you have to understand that whenever you record an action you always have to make sure that you are prepared or your action is prepared for every scenario so make sure that the image size is the same make sure that the color mode is the same uh, the resolution is the same and you have all the layers flattened when you start working just to make sure whenever you open an image and you start to run your action it will always end up with the same result obviously for easier actions you don't have to worry that much but as soon as you start to complicate your actions and add more and more steps you have to make sure that it's consistent good news is as you can see that you can always add and remove and modify steps in your actions so you don't have to always re-record the whole thing again if it doesn't work so you probably always start with an action which works on a couple of images then you run into a problem with another new uh, format for example and then you have to make amends to your action to make sure that it works on that format as well I hope it wasn't too confusing this whole tutorial and I hope you are still interested in learning more about actions because in the following tutorial I'm going to show you another very exciting thing which is actually based on a new feature in Photoshop CS6 and that is to be able to record brush strokes I give you time to think about that and in the next tutorial I'm going to show you how to use this feature thanks a lot for your attention and see you soon